Make sure this is going. All right, we're rolling. All right, this is a home interview, Woodstock, New York. Uh, it is the 28th of July, 2003, approximately 10.30 a.m. Interviewers are Mike Russert and Wayne Clark. Could you give me your full name, date of birth, and place of birth, please? Uh, Edmund Joseph Tomaselli. Uh, born on January 2nd, 1919. And where were you born? In Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, New York. Okay. Um, what was your educational background prior to entering military service? I had graduated from high school. Mm -hmm. John okay. Adams High School in Ozone Park, Queens. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, now you entered uh, military service uh, in May of 1941. Did you, were you drafted or did you I was enlist? drafted on May 7th, 1941. Mm -hmm. I went to Camp Upton, New York on Long Island. <clears throat> okay, and this is where you went for basic training? No, okay. I went there for uh, an IQ test, and they kept me there for about a week, and then they shipped me out to uh, Camp Landing, Florida, mm -hmm. where I joined the uh, 35th Field Artillery Regiment of the 74th Field Artillery Brigade. I arrived there on May 15, 1941. Mm -hmm. I went into the 2nd, I went to D Battery. 2nd Battalion, 35th Field Artillery Regiment. Mm -hmm. Now what kind of weapons were you using at that time? Uh, long Toms, mm -hmm. 155 millimeter rifles. Mm -hmm. um, how were they towed? Uh, in those days they were towed by tractors. As a matter of fact, we were using World War I 155 millimeter rifles mm -hmm. <laughs> for training purposes. And these were towed by tractors? Yes. Okay. Um, were you there in December of 41? Yes. Um, could you tell us where you were exactly, if you recall, and your reaction to uh, hearing about Pearl Harbor? Well, it was after lunch, and I was sitting on my bed in my camp, Camp uh, Landing, of course, uh, and the... Uh, news came over the radio that Pearl Harbor had been bombed by the Japanese. Mm -hmm. Do you recall your reaction or the reaction of those around you? <clears throat> I was the only person in the tent and of course I was astounded. Mm -hmm. Did you have any idea where Pearl Harbor was? Well of course they said it was Hawaii. Oh, okay. Alright, um, all right. could you tell us then about the remainder of your training? Well we had a cadre of uh, southern boys who uh, taught us all about field artillery mm -hmm. and stuff. And, now was uh, this your first time away from home? Uh, well, when I was age 12 I had gone to Boy Scout camp oh, okay. for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, and so therefore this was actually the first time away from home. Mm -hmm. How did you get along as a northerner with the southerners? Uh, very well. Mm -hmm. We had fellows from Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and New York. And, they, and the teaching cadre were all southern boys. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, when did you switch over to more, quote, modern weapons? <coughs> oh, uh -huh. it's hard to say. Uh, not 1941, <coughs> it was probably in 1942. So up until 42, you used World War I training. training. What kind of uniforms did you have? The old World War One style helmet, or no, no. Well, you didn't have any helmets in those days. Mm -hmm. We just had uh, fatigues and uh, tans. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so you're you're not sure when you it was somewhere in '42 that you transferred over to the new weapons. Um, did you have to do any other additional training to learn how to use those, or? Was it basically about the same? Basically about the same. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, where did you go after Florida? We went to, uh, well, we had uh, maneuvers in South Carolina, but then after Florida, we went to uh, Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And from Hattiesburg, Mississippi, we went to uh, Louisiana and Texas on maneuvers. Mm -hmm until we had to go to uh, Camp Shanks where we were sent overseas 
and uh, we arrived in. Uh, what? Um, how did you go overseas? Uh, in a convoy or single ship? It must have been a convoy, but of course I I wasn't observant of a convoy, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it was on the Alexander. If you ever heard of the Alexander? No. Big ship. Mm -hmm. Had about five thousand troops on it. Mm -hmm. Now, did your weapons go separately, or were they on the same ship? They went separately. Mm -hmm. Okay. And where did you? We go? landed in Oran, Africa, Algeria, on August third of nineteen forty-three. Mm -hmm. And what did you do from there? Well, the uh, combat was finished in Africa at the mm -hmm. time. Yes, right. And uh, on the, we stayed there until we we shipped out on a navy transport. We went to Naples, Italy. We arrived in Naples, Italy on October tenth, nineteen forty-three. Mm -hmm. We had our first air raid that night. <laughs> how, how did you feel? Well, could you describe your feelings? <laughs> well, not too bad. We just we were. I was walking on a street in Naples, and I just ducked into a doorway. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, when did you see your first combat? Up in the uh, casino, the Battle for Casino, mm -hmm. which lasted quite a number of months. Mm -hmm. Could you describe that action? Oh yes. Well, actually, we were firing long distance, so therefore we didn't have much uh, retaliation in our unit. Mm -hmm. The best thing I remember about it was I was in Venafro, V-E-N-A-F-R-O, and the rain came down for about a month, and we had about 12 inches of mud. That's about the worst thing we had there. Mm -hmm. Until, uh, I don't, well, it must have been about uh, the first week of February, they pulled us off the line and they sent us into Anzio Beachhead. And that place was five miles by eight miles, mm -hmm. if, you, if you knew anything about the beachhead. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> we were there until about June the 4th or June the 6th. But... Uh, I understand that the the beachhead would have been a success if the commanding general, I don't know who that was, I think he was a British general, uh, we had forces in Rome. And he pulled them back and established the beachhead. What was it like on the, the beachhead? Were you under fire constantly? Constantly. Or? We had uh, uh, paratroop patrol every night. There was a uh, one from six to twelve, and from twelve to six a.m. And uh, they would drop uh, anti-personnel bombs, a big canister about six to eight feet, ten feet long, and the door would open up. And these little things would drop out, take your arm or your head off. Were there many in your unit that were uh, wounded or killed from these, or? Uh, not to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. I was in the uh, anti-tank gun platoon on 37 millimeter uh, rifles. We were on the flank mm -hmm. of our Did tank. you ever engage any uh, German tanks? Just... No, we never did. Mm -hmm. But there was one point in time when the uh, the Germans were a hundred yards in front of us, and our big guns were firing point blank at them. Mm -hmm. so what kind of uh, shells did you use? A, a canister in action like that? Oh, well, actually, I don't recall. Yeah, you know, I think we had to use a canister behind the behind the uh, the shell. Mm -hmm. In the big guns. We probably used a high explosive or an armor piercing round too, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, did you guys take that group of tanks out that were 100 yards in front of you? Oh, sure. Uh -huh. So the 37 millimeter was pretty effective against the. Well, not the 37 millimeter. This is oh. the 155 oh, millimeter. Oh, okay. Firing at the uh, 
the enemy. Oh, okay. All right. Um, how long were you on the Angelo Beachhead? From uh, the beginning until June the 4th or 5th. Mm -hmm. And then we w proceeded to go into Rome. How are you uh, welcomed in Rome? Oh, with open arms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we uh, went north of Rome after a while, and then we pulled back because they were getting us ready for the invasion of southern France. <clears throat> when the captain or the colonel said, uh, anybody who has relatives here in Italy uh, can go visit them. We'll mm -hmm. provide transportation, but they have to be within our friendly lines. Mm -hmm. And uh, I uh, went to see my father, <coughs> brother, and his family for one week. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was nice. Very good. Now, did you speak Italian? Yes. How were you treated by them? Oh, I was the uh, king. Uh -huh. <laughs> Every night I would go to bed. In the morning I'd wake up. My uniform was washed and pressed, and my shoes were shined. <laughs> and I didn't do it. <laughs> now, did you ever have to act as an interpreter? Not really, no. Uh-huh. All right, after uh, that, were you involved in the invasion of southern France? No, what happened at that point in time, I, uh, there were a number of us that were sent to the replacement depot at Naples. And uh, we were going to be put into tanks. And uh, they had 75 millimeter houses on the tanks. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, but my unit, my original unit, the 977 Field Artillery Battalion, went to southern France. And there was a, I understand there was one plane that dropped an aerial bomb and hit our LST. And I lost a good number of friends. Mm -hmm. Now, why were you separated from that unit? To well, they the probably figured that uh, we had, that they had too many personnel in the, in the artillery and they wanted to put us in another phase. Mm -hmm. How did you feel about being a tanker? I didn't like that. I didn't go into the tanks, actually. I wound up, uh, <clears throat> they took us to France, and then from France I went to, uh, uh, they put me in the 772 Field Artillery Battalion, 155 millimeter howitzers. And, uh, now what was your job? Cannoneer with the okay. 772nd Field Artillery Battalion. Okay. And, uh, now, what exactly did the cannoneer do? Well, he, he had a, a hand the uh, ammunition okay. for the fellow to put into the uh, to the gun. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where was the ammunition kept? How far back from the guns was it kept? Not too far away, because you know you had to get it to the gun. Right. Right. I don't recall and that. And what was it kept in? I don't recall that. Okay. Must have been pretty he hard work, wasn't it? Those rounds must have been pretty heavy. Not too bad. Uh, we were young kids. Uh-huh. All right. Um, after you went into France, what kind of unit were you assigned to, and, and where did you go? We went through uh, Germany, and then we wound up in Salzburg, Austria, where the war ended. Mm -hmm. What kind of unit were you in at that time? The 772nd Field Artillery Battalion. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, were you aware of any of the German concentration camps at all? Uh, actually, I never got to see any of those. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, pardon? Oh, yes, okay. Um, were, do you recall where you were and uh, your reaction when you heard about the death of President Roosevelt? Uh, that was in April of 45, if I'm mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> it was secondhand news to us, I guess. Okay. Were you in Europe uh, when you heard about the dropping of the atomic bombs, or were you back? Uh, <clears throat> I think I was uh, in Europe at the time, right? Mm -hmm. What was your reaction to that? 
not really, not any. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, did you ever see any of the? Um, did you ever liberate any POW camps at all? Not our unit. No. Yeah. Okay. Um, when did you return home? Uh, I returned home on uh, September 26, 1945. Mm -hmm. And uh, where were you discharged? From uh, Fort Dix, New Jersey. All right. Um, you served under General Mark Clark. Yes. What were your feelings about him? I was an Did ordinary you, soldier, so I couldn't have any you, really you knowledgeable okay. feelings about whether he was doing what or uh -huh. why or how or whether it was good or bad or indifferent. Okay. Uh, when you returned to the United States, did you uh, make use of the GI Bill? I sure did. Uh, in what way? Uh, first, I'll, I'll talk about my being discharged from Fort Dix. I'm okay. Going, sure. I'm going through the door, and the uh, <clears throat> sergeant said, Soldier, how about signing up for the, uh, uh, you know, uh, the uh, reserves? Reserves. I looked him in the eye and said, after four and a half years, are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> so then I got home to South Ozone Park, Queens, New York, where my family is. And <clears throat> I went down to my original place of uh, employment. I had been a, a shipping clerk in charge of a seven-story warehouse on Hudson Street in Manhattan. And uh, I went back there and uh, the woman in charge says, you could have your old job back. I said, but I'd like to be a salesman. Oh, what do you know about selling? Well, you have to learn sometime, I said. So <clears throat> she wanted me to go to work on Monday. That was a Friday. I said, well, give me two weeks off and I'll be back. Thank God I never went back. I went out to play golf with a, a friend of mine whose two sons I was very friendly with, uh, Mr. O'Neill, who was a school teacher. I said, I'm too old to go to college. He says, how old are you? I said, I'm 26. And uh, he said, I'll show you a man who started college at 30 and now he's a school teacher. So that did it. Mm -hmm. And I went around trying to get into different colleges in the city and Long Island, and they were all filled. And that was in October, November, December went by, January went by, and uh, the first Friday in February, the man who talked me to go into college, his son called me up and said, uh, I'm going down to St. Francis College in the morning to speak with the dean. Would you like to take a ride? And I said, sure, maybe we can get in that school. He said, well, we'll try and see what happens. So I went there, and the next morning we had an hour interview with Brother Leo Quinn, Dean of St. Francis College in Brooklyn, New York. After one hour, John says, well, how, what do you think about Ed going to school here, brother? Uh, brother? He says, you want to do that, Ed? And I said, sure. Classes start on Monday morning. <laughs> and I, I asked him later on, about two months later on, he never saw my high school uh, certificate. I didn't have to, I spoke with you. They of course got the certificate later on. Mm -hmm. And I, I completed two years of uh, work at college in one year. And then I wanted to go to dental school. Mm -hmm. And I, I, across the street from my home was a, a playground. I'm playing basketball every day with the guys. And there was a young dentist there. And I said, what shall I do? He says, write to every dental school in the country and see what happens. I wrote a letter to Marquette University School of Dentistry. And the secretary wrote me back. We have a thousand applicants for a hundred seats. Sorry, we can't send you an application. Two weeks later, I got a new letter with an application <laughs> to the school. I filled out the application. Two weeks later, I got a receipt back that said you are accepted at the School of Dentistry, Marquette University. Four years later, 1951, June, 
I graduated from Marquette uh, School of Dentistry with a Doctor of Dental Surgery degree. Now, do you think if it wasn't for the GI Bill, you think you would have gone out to college? Actually, it was the height of depression when I, I graduated from high school, and I said to my mother and father, I will go to work, and when my brother, who was one year behind me, comes out of high school, I'll help support him. He went to college immediately, mm -hmm. and uh, we did it that way, but I never realized enough money to say I can go to college. Did you ever make use of the 52-20 club? I collected every $20 bill. <laughs> <laughs> was, it, was it $20? Yes. Yeah. 52 weeks, $20. Yeah, I collected every one of those. Okay. Did you ever uh, see a USO show while you were in service? Not really. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, did you stay in contact with anyone that you served with? Yes, we have uh, reunions every year from the 977 Field Artillery Battalion. I was closer to them than the guys in the 772nd because I was only with them a, a matter of months. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been now going on since, oh, at least 35 years, maybe 40 years, that we have, we have another reunion coming up at the Holiday Inn on the boardwalk at Atlantic yeah. City mm -hmm. in, in October. Did you stay in personal contact with anyone over the years? Yes, uh, practically all of them. Mm -hmm. okay. We used to go visit them and they'd come visit us. Did you join any veterans organizations? The Veterans of Farm Wars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how do you think your time in service changed or affected your life? Oh. <laughs> It certainly had a big effect and it certainly changed my life, uh, resulting in my becoming a doctor of dental surgery. Mm -hmm. Other than, I never got a scratch in all the time I was in service. And other than uh, being able to go to school, paid for by the uh, United States government. Mm -hmm. And when uh, February came around in my senior year, I received a letter from some person in Washington. He said, your record is so good, we're going to see that you get everything until the end of your four years. Okay, well, thank you very much for your yes. interview. Thank you. There they are. Well, I was 120 pounds soaking wet. All right. Uh, let's see. Seven steps to heaven. <laughs> okay. Let me zoom in on the. Okay, what are those uh, two ribbons? You want to tell us about those? Oh gosh. I think this must be for the European uh, mm -hmm. theater and theater and, and. I don't think that. That might be the World War II victory? Maybe. Okay. That's my original from Camp Landing, Florida. Okay. All right, got it. Okay. All right, well, thank you. Okay, thanks again. Good. Wayne can focus in on them. This is when I had hair. <laughs> when I arrived home uh, a little after September 26, 1945. Okay, got that one. Now oh, that's the Eisenhower jacket you had on, isn't it? Uh-huh. Yeah. This is my father and mother. Short. Oh. Oh, this is not my picture. This is my brother's picture. He oh, was your a, brother? He was in the Air Force. Oh, okay. He was saving That's guys. all right. That's okay. He was saving fellows out of the uh, English Channel. What was his name? Uh, Eugene. Okay. And uh, he flew on a PBY. Oh, yes, oh. okay. And here's your other brother. 
phone with your with your brother from the navy. He's my uh, same brother with my mother, Eugene. Okay. <clears throat> We had, uh, my mother and father had three sons. My brother there, Arthur, in the Navy uniform. He was on the John W. Weeks destroyer. Uh -huh. He said uh, in the Pacific, and at one time it almost rolled over. Wow. Okay. A big storm. So all three of you ser served then? Yes, we did. Uh -huh. I three. came home first. My brother Eugene came home second. My brother Arthur came home third. Okay. Are they still alive? Uh, my brother Arthur passed away about uh, how long ago, Agnes? Four? Five years ago. Five years ago. My brother Eugene is still alive. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, thank, thank you very much. You can hold those up and show us. The females, some of them, a couple of the words are so funny. I'm swell. <laughs> you ever hear that anymore? <laughs> no. Not too often. <laughs> I'm swell. Well, that, that was the language in those days. Yeah. You were uh -huh. innocent people. <laughs> Not like today. Is that good enough like that? That's fine. Just an idea of what it looks like. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay.